Hey there, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Thanks for joining me on the Chaos to Calm podcast, a podcast designed for women over 40 who think that changing hormones might be messing with their mood, metabolism and energy and want to change that in a healthy, sustainable and permanent way. Each episode will explore topics related to health and wellness for women in their 40s, like what the heck is happening to your hormones, what to do about it with nutrition, lifestyle and stress management and inspiring conversations with guests sharing their insights and tips on how to live your best life in your 40s and beyond. So if you're feeling like you're in the midst of a hormonal storm and don't want perimenopause to be horrific, then join me on Chaos to Calm as I share with you how to make it to menopause without it wrecking your relationships and life. Hello and welcome to Chaos to Calm, where we explore the transformative journey that is perimenopause. I am Sarah McLaughlin, the perimenopause naturopath, your host. And in this episode number 15, I'm actually reflecting on my personal experiences moving into menopause. So I'm going to be sharing what worked, what didn't, the key strategies, key things that I thought about and some that I still use religiously for supporting and optimizing my health. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you'll stay with me as we navigate the highs and lows for me and um, I'll uncover lots of practical tips because if you've hung around here for 15 episodes so far, hopefully you realize that I'm pretty pragmatic and uh, I love a good practical tip. And um, yeah, I'll talk you through what worked for me in terms of managing the symptoms. there as well. Uh, So let's dive in, shall we? First of all, I wanted to start with thinking about acknowledging the transition and embracing menopause because I am the perimenopause naturopath. I'm talking about it a lot. And I thought that when I got to menopause, I'd be like, woo, or shout it, you know, (laughs) shout it out on the streets. I made it. I'm here. Like I am in my crone phase I don't I think there must be some mid phase before we get to there you know menopause phase before I move into crone phase but anyway I thought that I would be really like shouting it out but actually I became menopausal probably nearly two months ago so not long after I started recording the podcast and um yeah I haven't mentioned it I haven't really talked about it with anyone and I was reflecting on that well what What's the problem? Because it's not that I feel, you know, I don't feel any shame about it. I don't feel old. I don't, you know, I don't attach perimenopause and the transition to menopause as being old or or aging me because we know that, you know, it can start mid thirties and some women go into menopause early forties. Um, I think actually the, and you know, I'm reflecting more. The issue for me was that some grief around the end of those hormones for myself and what that means for my body. So not certainly not grief around not having any more babies or kids. I mean, oh my gosh, if I've got four, (laughs) the first thing I said when I had my fourth child after I'd birthed her was, well, I don't have to do that ever again. (laughs) So yeah, it was certainly no grief around that. By the time she weaned, from breastfeeding, like I was so done with any aspect of that. So it's certainly not grieving those reproductive years, though I understand that can be very big and real thing for many women if they haven't had the opportunity to sort of play out to their max or max out their uh, reproductive capacity there. So, um, yeah, so it's certainly not, not any of that for me, but I think because I know how important and how beneficial these hormones are for my body, my bones, my brain, my cardiovascular system, my muscle, you know, so much, I actually feel quite grief and denial about it. Maybe I'll have another period. <laughs> you know, I could say I'm menopausal and then if I have a period, well, then what? Um, yeah, it's been well over 12 months since I had a period. So it's not going to happen, Sarah. Time to face that. So time to embrace that there. Then I was thinking I should have a menopause party. So wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't you love that to come along to someone's menopause party? It's like the party you didn't want to have when you were going through puberty and you got your period. (laughs) 
<laughs> and, and now I'm like, yes, give me a party for any reason. I'll have a party. And I think that would be fun. So I'm keen to hear what would you do at a menopause party? What would you, where would you go? Where would you have it? Would you have cake? How do we celebrate this? So I, w- I would love it if you would share with me your ideas. Feel free to either share them on social media and tag me on Instagram. I am at the perimenopause naturopath or feel free to drop me an email. You can do that via my show notes at www.chaostocalmpodcast.com. Uh, so, you know, anywhere that you listen to your podcast from, you can access me and send me a message or email from there i want to know what would you do if your menopause party who would you invite would you have like your teens and younger kids there as well or you know girls boys so that you know they can see celebrating uh hormones and menstruation and all of those things and the next phase of life i don't know i kind of feel like i would like to have my young girls there so that they can see um, that, but yeah, I don't know. I can't think of what to do. So I really, I want your ideas around that, please. Please share. Um, so let's talk about what worked well and what didn't, uh, work well for me through my perimenopause journey now to menopause as well. So first up, I want to say, I did not realize I was in perimenopause until, you know, I was like midway through. It was probably just a, a, over a few years ago. I was like, oh, actually think I'm in perimenopause because it had so much disruption to my cycle with pregnancy breastfeeding and then lots of stress high stress and trauma it was a bit muddled so it wasn't really until I got I started getting really heavy periods and flooding and then I was like oh right I think this might be it um I'm in perimenopause so I hadn't taken the deep dive into learning more about perimenopause and menopause and and supporting women in that phase of life. I was supporting women, but more on stress and and that angle there. So what didn't work well for me was not having my own practitioner. And what didn't work well for me at that time, which is also what works well for me now, was not having my own metabolic balance personalized nutrition plan. Like seriously, three years ago, when I discovered that, just like the thing that I'd been looking for, you know, I wanted to be able to help people learn how to eat, you know, learn food as medicine. When I was at uni studying to be a naturopath, I just wanted to learn how to teach people to eat. And I didn't feel like I had that fully nailed when I left college or uni. And when I discovered metabolic balance, you know, I was really at a low point health wise and Uh, so many allergies and just feeling rubbish all the time that I was like, stuff it. I reckon it's going to work for me. If I never use it with clients, whatever, I just feel like it's going to work for, do something for me. Um, And it did. So eating that, you know, at least 80% of the time, eating the whole foods that nourish my body, that are optimal for me, you know, that work really well for me. That was the thing that really, lifted my health back up and got me back up and also got rid of things like flushes and sweats and and helped me sleep better and just have better energy across the day not be a cranky grumpy version of myself which I hated as much as my kids hated there as well so I would have would have been great to have my own practitioner to tell me what to do and and help me get out of my own way because you know what we're like as humans we can sabotage ourselves or we can put speed bumps in the road for ourselves so that you know just make it hard generally but we also can't see objectively like someone outside can and I'm off you know that's often what I am for my clients asking questions you know just prodding and poking them in the right direction so that they can see what they're doing and how they're getting in their own way. But I would have liked that something I should have invested for myself. Although, so, um, yeah, I wish I had done that too and, um, maintain that as well, because it's nice to have someone on the outside looking in to say, Hey, well, why don't you tweak your herbs or do this or do that? So that would have been really useful, but definitely changing my food and how I approach food, moving my coffee to after breakfast 
that was ma- that was huger than what you might think it might be. And if you're not doing that, I challenge you to do it and see what difference it makes over a couple of weeks p- time ha- to your energy across the day. Um, so I did that. I ate, then you know because I'd had my metabolic balance personalized nutrition plan, I was eating more phytoestrogen rich foods, flax seeds, legumes, lentils, um, flaxseed oil, really anti-inflammatory blood glucose level balancing, got me out of insulin resistance, which has a massive effect on your female hormones. So that was, yeah, really good talking about perimenopause. You know, so many women like you come and talk to me or tell me, oh, I listen to your podcast or, oh, I follow you on socials and I love that. Or they message me, you know, I get lots of messages from women like you telling me, their experience or how they've benefited from us talking about it so having a community is really lovely and I guess the benefit of being in this phase and my clients also being in this phase and when I do our coaching calls each week it's you know I'm I'm with women and get to talk with women that are understanding and we're all in the same phase uh, there together so that's really nice to learn you know and sometimes I work with women who are post-menopause they're getting their insights as well um, is really nice too and lots of reading I've done lots of reading you know Glennon Doyle, Brené Brown, Gay Hendricks lots of um, reading as Kirsten Neff self-compassion that was one of the best books I've ever read. I really encourage you to read it because it just helped me embrace self-care and looking after myself. So alongside of those nourishing foods and, you know, decreasing my coffee and, and I didn't drink much already and I still don't drink much alcohol um, and I don't eat much sugar and never really have. But, um, yeah, eating those wholesome nourishing foods that work really well for me, that personalized nutrition plan that works for me and my phytoestrogens. And um, self-care was the other thing. Massive, massive. Changing my perception and of what it is to be a good mother. What does that mean? It's not what we've been told. It's not being a martyr. It's not putting yourself last. It's actually putting yourself first. We can't serve if we don't look after ourselves. We've got nothing left to give. And then we're just cranky, aggravated, agitated, irritated versions of ourselves. And we're not helpful for anyone you know and then the negative talk comes and you verbally you know internally abusing yourself because you're just being so harsh and unkind to yourself so self-care now self-care for me is not many pedis and massages all the time don't get me wrong I book myself in for a facial every month I do it when I'm there book the next one so there's no excuses and you know what it always seems to come around at the best time I'm like feeling a bit overworked or things that you know stuff's happening then I look at my calendar and I go oh I got a facial with Jade next week awesome so I have it just over an hour facial and massage it's the highlight of my month and I like to book those things in in advance and that is self-care as well or book in a catch-up with a friend or making sure that you know I go to my lacrosse training and I see my friends and I have dinner with them afterwards or um you know, things like that. I put that into my calendar regularly and make time for that because I'm a much nicer person when I have time away from my family. I'm much nicer to them. (laughs) We homeschool, you know, we're together a lot. So it's really important for us to have some time apart from each other as well, because that gives us the solitude and space to breathe and think um, there as well. So self-care for me is that kind of stuff. It's going to bed and getting you know, my seven to eight hours sleep that I need to be working well. And that helps a lot. Like I noticed, I was saying to my mum the other day, hi mum, if you're listening, (laughs) I know mum listens. Um, And so, yeah, I was saying to her, like I notice if I don't have my sleep, if I, if I sabotage myself and think, oh, I just need some more alone time. I'm just going to keep scrolling here on my phone while I'm watching Netflix at like 11 o'clock at night. I feel terrible the next day. And I can't remember words. So that is one of the symptoms that's come up for me in the last probably 12 to 18 months. It's so much worse for stress and and lack of sleep. And when I'm not eating well, if I'm eating too much refined carbs like bread and crackers and things like that and chips and other stuff. 
um, I forget the words. You know, I, the other day I forgot feature. I was sitting there trying to text to someone and I'm like, what is the word? And it came to me. I got excited, wrote it down. But uh, I forget I forget names, you know, people, places, things, just random words. And that happens a lot for women as we move through to menopause and, and it can take a couple of years to settle down. But I know for me, because I've paid attention to it, it's definitely worse when I've got too much on and I'm overworked or stressed or overwhelmed and not sleeping enough or um, well enough. So, you know, it's a go to bed earlier, switch off the devices. Like the more time that I spend on them, it gets worse for that as well. And um, make sure I move my body as well. So that that's like my self-care basics. I stick with them religiously. I eat three meals a day. I do not snack. I um, have my coffee after my meal and I don't drink caffeinated beverages after midday. In fact, I don't even have any after breakfast these days because that interrupts my sleep. I try to move my body multiple times a week in a way that I enjoy and that builds strength and muscle mass. And um, I eat 80% of the time, I eat, probably 90% of the time actually, I eat foods that are wholesome and nourishing for my body and that work really well for me. And I don't deviate from them, but I don't feel like I miss out. You know, I have a glass of wine when I want to and or a gin or whatever it might be. At Easter time, I had chocolate. I had gluten-free hot cross buns. You know, I, I don't miss out at all, let me tell you that. Um, but I feel great and I have energy to do all the different things that I need to do in my life. And I haven't had any flushes. I haven't had any sweats. I, I have, haven't had any joint pain or discomfort that isn't dis- directly related to me thinking I'm 25 and playing full contact version of lacrosse or something like that. (laughs) I think I'm 25, not 48 and a half. So um, those things I stick with because they work really well for me and they keep those symptoms at bay. So like my perimenopause literally was not horrific. Yay, because I'm always telling you all, it does not have to be horrific. And I like to think I'm living proof that it, it isn't. And so are many of my clients there as well. So that wraps up my menopause journey update. I hope my insights and experiences have provided you with some information and inspiration for your own journey to menopause and beyond. And please remember that you're not alone in this. And we do have our community. There's that you can connect with the Chaos to Calm community and continue the conversation in our Facebook group. Actually, that's a really great place to go and tell me what you think about the menopause party. So I want you, I would love you to go into um, the Chaos to Calm community on Facebook and tell me what you would do for your uh, menopause party. Who would you invite? What would you do? You know, don't be limited by money or or anything practical. (laughs) just like go grand on this one sister uh yeah and it's also a place that you can share your story and your insights as well I'd love to hear from you and your experience and and what you've learned or what works really well for you as well as you're moving through to menopause so you know we can get to menopause and beyond we can feel energetic enthusiastic loving life like it really is the best phase of my life I think now um it's just such a you know a great space that I'm at, that I'm in. My kids are getting older. We can do more with them. We can do more without them. We, uh, you know, I love my work. I feel blessed that I get to do what I was really passionate about, and you know, we're financially comfortable. We just it's a great phase and space. I know what I want. I'm not afraid to set boundaries. That's also something that worked really well for me and that I've learned in this time in perimenopause to menopause that, that, you know, how to set boundaries and lovingly and kindly hold them. Um, So, yeah, I hope that my experience is is helpful to you and inspiring to you as well. Um, And thank you so much for joining me and sharing your time with me today. As always, I really value and appreciate it. And I encourage you to stay tuned for the next episode on chaos to calm and until that time please remember that perimenopause does not have to be horrific
It's really common for women over 40 to experience the chaos of changing hormones, mood, metabolism, and energy. But I hope you know now that common doesn't have to equal normal for you or them. You can help others understand they aren't alone in feeling this way and that perimenopause doesn't have to be horrific by subscribing, leaving a review and sharing this podcast with other women in their 40s and beyond. Thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with me today in this chaos to come conversation.